ask questions to make data-driven decisions. This is course number two of the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate Program. I'm reviewing it right now. You just gotta analyze stuff. What is up? Matt Bratton here with tmbanalytics.com, your analytics career headquarters, here to review course number two of the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate Program. And I gotta say, look, we're gonna do the same thing that we did in the beginning of the course one review, which was take a look at from the time that I had done the initial like scope out and look up to see how many people were enrolled, it was like 2,300 or 23,000 people. Uh, then from the time I went, and I'm gonna show you this, when I did my, my second video of the course number one review, there were 43,900, almost 44,000 people signed up for this, this program. Check this out. Of the, the certificate program right now, almost 96,000 people have enrolled. This thing is just continuing to blow up. I, I'm i not even that surprised anymore. I'm, I'm not, when this thing passes 100K and hits 250K, probably in the next few months, I'm gonna continue to not be surprised. This is, it's impressive. That's all I can really say, but it's a good program. I'm gonna continue to work my way through it and give you my honest feedback on it. So that's what I'm here to do right now. But uh, I did finish course number two had generally positive thoughts about it, but uh, you know, I think in general, the course topic ask questions to make data-driven decisions. I think my, my knee-jerk reaction was just happy that they would dedicate one of the eight courses to asking questions. It's such a critical component of being an analyst. You ask any active analyst out there today, like what are some of the most beneficial soft skills that you can have to be an effective analyst and asking questions is more than likely going to come up in most of the people's answers because it's powerful being able to not just be comfortable asking questions but knowing the types of questions to ask how to ask them when to ask them of whom to ask them all super important because you know we just just because you're an analyst doesn't mean you know everything but you should be able to figure out how to get the information that you need so I was excited that this course existed. So let's just jump right in, let's do it. So here it is, I'm gonna prove to you all that I have started to learn how to navigate the Coursera interface here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just click on the course. It's gonna open up a new window, tell me all this fun stuff like congratulations that I've already completed it. I haven't rated it yet, but it's okay. So you'll see right away, this was a four week course. I think you'll remember the first course was, I think it was five weeks, uh, if I remember correctly. And uh, content-wise, the way that it was set up, very similar. You, it was probably a heavier dose of video content in this one, lots of different video snippets, and it gets into a few different things. And I'm gonna walk you through each one of those right now. So week number one, asking effective questions. So let's just go ahead and click onto the module. And it's gonna, we're gonna go straight to the top, problem solving, effective questioning. It has you working through how to take actions with data, solving problems with data, crafting effective questions, and then it gets into your practice quiz. So the things that I wanted to highlight here, and again, this is uh, the way that I'm taking this course is not necessarily what I would recommend anyone else do, but what I'm doing is if there's video or reading, I'm going through it right i'm going to go through and check it i am not taking the quizzes uh because i'm just not interested in doing that because what i'm before i even go through the readings and reviews i'm taking the tests so i'm taking the test to see where i stand so far i'm passing everything without even looking at the content uh but then i'm going back through the content and reviewing everything just to see is it reinforcing is it helpful is it good is it bad is it otherwise and so far, I think it's been a pretty good way to do it. I haven't been engaging as much as I probably should in the, the forums. I think I've said this before. They've got everything set up where they're, they're really trying to integrate involvement in the community as part of the course curriculum, where it'll give you a discussion prompt. So here's an example. It says, hey, you know, meet and greet. At the beginning, we talked about this stuff. How about you put her, uh, you know, participate, say something. And then if you hit reply, it's gonna post it onto the forums and you'll hopefully get some engagement. Uh, it's just to make sure that you feel like you're part of the community. And I think uh, there's actually quite a few folks who are doing that. I am not one of them, but I see the value in it. And it's a great place to find support if you need it for a lot of these things, or if you just want it, if you wanna network with other people who are going through this. Uh, 
problem solving with effective questioning, this top section here. It gives you a review of the course syllabus. It gives you a refresher on the whole roadmap of the course. It talks about you know where you stand, where you're headed if you continue down this path. It also gives you uh, the opportunity once again to explore the fast track. So it says, hey, by the way, did you wanna take this diagnostic test and see if maybe you can speed things up a little bit? Uh, I just kind of reviewed the readings and checked them off. There was nothing much to say there. So after that first section here is a bit of a recap, it does get into more actual content. So here's the first item. It talks about the six data analysis phases. So step number one is ask, then it gets into prepare, process, analyze, share, and act. This is what they're defining as, as the six data analysis phases. And because ask is number one, that's sort of setting like, hey, this is the foundation. This is where you're gonna start on any analytical endeavor. So we gotta reinforce this area of the learning where asking good questions is imperative that you do that right. So it sets you up for success as you work through the analytical process. Um, gives you lots of uh, additional videos with other talking heads, very cool stuff. Talks about the six problem types that analysts will typically encounter. Um, maybe not encounter, but when you're, you're an analyst, you're out in the wild, you're working on solving a problem, it's gonna be one of these six flavors is what they're trying to say. So making predictions, categorizing things, spotting something unusual, identifying themes, discovering connections and finding patterns. I thought it was nice that they tried to, you know, create little boxes for all these things. Um, I don't really know what to say about it other than, hey, I'm glad they thought about it. Uh, it I've never really thought about the types of asks in this way so it was cool that they they took that step i've mentioned it before that a lot of what it feels like they're doing is trying to create standards around a lot of what is typically sort of an, an amorphous process that analysts will tend to go through so i can appreciate that i think that was good then it gets into smart questions so it sets it up with a video gives you the reading options so what smart questions are and um when I, when I first read this, I was thinking in my mind, uh, what is it, smart uh, goals, setting smart goals for yourself. You've probably heard about this. Very similar here. So asking smart questions. So it has to be specific, measurable, action-oriented, relevant, and time-bound. So all things to just keep in mind as you're asking questions of stakeholders, uh, trying to get good answers. If you can keep all of those areas uh, in mind as you're working through it, then you're gonna end up asking smarter questions. Funny how that works, right? So we've got all our quizzes, weekly challenge is the quiz and aced it. So once you've done that, you're done with week number one and you can move on to week number two. So in week number two, we are learning about data-driven decisions, uh, data and decisions. So learn about data and decisions, it just sets it up with the introductory video. Uh, we have this data trials and triumphs. We've got a few different talking head videos. Uh, they get into talking about qualitative and quantitative data. Uh, this is probably a concept that's not new for anybody, but it talks about different tools that are used to actually uh, acquire qualitative versus quantitative data, how it's handled differently. So like, how are you gonna spot it? How do you treat it differently? Um, I thought this was fine. There was nothing outstanding about it. Uh, and it's important to understand. That's good. Uh, then we get into um, sharing your findings and metrics versus data. What does it mean? What are the differences? And it goes on to talk about uh, designing dashboards. So some of the benefits of dashboarding, centralization, visualization, insightfulness, customization, talks about four uh, what does it mean for the analyst versus what does it mean for the stakeholders when they're going through this process of building uh, dashboards? Now, I think as I started to get into this and you'll see in the next section, I started kind of wondering, okay, wait a minute, what does this have to do with asking smart questions? And, you know, I'm giving them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt in a lot of this stuff because really, you know, I started off by saying I was super excited that they dedicated an entire uh, course to the Ida, the the thought of asking questions, but realistically, to milk an entire course for this topic, you know, they had to do what they had to do, which was getting into some of the outcomes of questions, uh, of asking smart questions, of of asking questions and types of data that you're asking questions about, types of stakeholders that you're asking of, and what are the things that are going to be important to them. So I I was 
understanding of the way the direction that they went on some of these things even if in the moment i i did find myself scratching my head like what are they talking like why is this part of this section well uh, it, it's <laughs> the reality is to make a course out of this stuff it's kind of what they had to do so they, they go in and they define big data small data what are the challenges and benefits of working with different types of uh, data like this all good stuff uh, week two was was a little different a little bit of variety and then we get into week number three and this is where I was really asking the question like what does this have to do with asking questions because now they're introducing spreadsheets um, showing you know there's some some Google Sheets work that we do here um, uh, they they re up the options to get into the ex external tools that you can that you're gonna w do more work in. It's all optional stuff that they're they're kind of throwing out there, ungraded exercises. But uh, you get the point. But uh, what was something in here? Yeah. So the the data life cycle. This is something that I gotta be honest. Maybe this is very academic, and other people have heard of this stuff. I've never really thought about it in this way, but plan, capture, manage, analyze, archive, and destroy <laughs> data. Um, I was having flashbacks to the diagnostic test where it said whether or not you can you know, take the fast track. And I said I passed that test. I did miss a couple of questions, but the questions I missed were in relation to this because it talks about you know the destruction of data and uh, how you appropriately archive data. And this is all, I'll say, somewhat foreign to me uh, probably because where a lot of this stuff exists is more uh, on on the maybe that's not true to say on the architecture side, but um, just bigger bigger rule governance planning type stuff that I've never really uh, been super involved in. So uh, that was difficult to get out of my mouth, <laughs> but basically all all that to say that. Um, this whole week felt a little strange, but again, I had to keep going back to the idea that, look, uh, I got, we, we got a course on asking questions. There's a lot of stuff that you might ask questions about that you need to understand. Um, it's all for creating uh, perspective and um, adding context to what you're dealing with as an analyst. So I, I gave them a pass and we got uh, spreadsheet basics here. It talks about Excel and Google Sheets. There was something in here uh, using formulas, using functions. There was somewhere, it was a reference guide, yeah. So it gives you a bunch of popular shortcuts, which I thought was cool because number one, those are valuable. It's always good. I, I am one of those people who doesn't like to touch my mouse if I'm using Excel and uh, in Google Sheets, I have to strongly resist the urge to use shortcuts because the ones that I know from Excel don't usually work in Sheets, but this gives you a lot of shortcuts for that. So I'm actually gonna use this as reference material. I think that's great, it's good to have. So a uh, little, little bonus out there. And it talks about the importance of context, which is what I was just talking about uh, in how what they're trying to do is really frame for you uh, the, the things that analysts are going to encounter and how you need to be mindful, not just asking questions, but interacting with stakeholders. So that's week, week number three. Uh, again, importance of context here. And we're gonna go in home stretch. already week number four. So week number four, learn about communication best practices. I'm gonna jump right in. Uh, all about communication with, communicating with your team. So it's going to talk about the balance of team and stakeholder needs, uh, which is this is this is legit. This is real. Uh, I, I actually really enjoyed this section so much so that they have this uh, optional section down here that I'm going to talk about in a second. But I, I was just thinking to myself, why is this optional? Just make this part of the court. Like, why even go through the motions of making it optional? I thought it was valuable. but. Uh, what I wanted to highlight here is, you know, working with stakeholders. Um, some of some of what I thought they did here actually took things a little bit farther than I was comfortable, because it tried to be very prescriptive, uh, very explicit about this is a primary stakeholder and this is a secondary stakeholder, and you treat this type of stakeholder different from this and it just i was like wait no no come on like 
seriously in the real world, um, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll, I'll put my foot in my mouth or somebody can tell me in the comments that I'm an idiot. But I don't know. If you've got stakeholders, you've got stakeholders and you should be aware of how to treat them. It's not about labeling them as a you're a number one and you're a number two. Come on. It's about what do you need to know and what do you need to know and how am I servicing you guys? I don't want to go through the extra thought processes of classifying people and treating them a specific way. So I get it. Again, they're trying to create standards and uh, I just thought that they pushed things a little bit far there. So I, I don't want to say that I was upset by it. I was just kind of questioning it a little bit because up to this point, everything has actually felt very realistic. Um, it was the first time that I kind of felt like we were venturing into kumbaya land a little bit. Um, talks about the limitations of data when you're dealing with dirty data, inconsistent data, incomplete data, all that fun stuff. Uh, <clears throat> and so again, the optional, this is, this is where I, I got... Um, a little fired up because it talks about like leading great meetings and you know what asking questions and like leading meetings driving meetings where you're getting information i don't see this as optional i think this is i think this is critical for all professionals that need to understand what is the anatomy of a good meeting because if you don't understand that you run the risk of wasting a lot of people's time certainly over the course of your career so you know, I'm glad that they put this in here. I don't know why they put it as optional. If you're working through the course, don't treat it as optional. Go through this. It's got good stuff. It talks about uh, what a good agenda looks like and how to how to navigate certain types of questions and how to how to work through a meeting effectively and not waste people's time. I mean, come on, not optional. Do it. And then it goes into the the course challenge, and that was it. That was course number two in a nutshell of the Google Data Analytics Professional Certificate Program. And I haven't rated it yet. I think if I had to, this one, you can tell that I was a little bit disappointed on a couple of things, not because I thought that it was bad or wrong, but I just thought that it, it took things too far, farther than I would have. So in some ways, I, I, if I could, I would give it like a four and a half. Um, I don't know that I wanna give it a four. I don't know that I wanna give it a five. I'm not gonna grade it on camera just because I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Uh, last time I just kind of pushed the button on a whim because I was right there and I was like, hey, this is a five. Eh, I'm still debating if it's a four or five for me, the way that they're bucketing this. But in the end, uh, very happy with it though. Uh, this It's not a two, I'll tell you that much. It's it's good. Uh, I, I do want to respond to some of the questions that I've gotten in the comments. There's been a lot of people asking about um, you know, show me the quizzes and show me the, the give me the answers. And uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to apologize for not doing that. Uh, there's, I'm trying to be very cautious in all the content that I'm showing here just because I don't want to like show everything. Uh, if you want to take the free trial and breeze through all this stuff, you're welcome to do that. I'm trying to give you as much information as I think is is helpful for you to understand what it is that you're getting yourself into. I'm giving this thing very positive reviews. I think this is a great program so far, as far as I've gone through it. This course number two is consistent with that. I'm looking forward to getting into course number three and beyond. Uh, I do still highly recommend this for anybody who's interested in getting into this area of, uh, of for their career, the field that they're interested in. And, um, Something also that people have asked me about is like, you know, scholarships and, and discounts and things like that. And look, Coursera does have uh, applications for scholarship and other financial aid and things like that. So that is definitely something if I have some resources, I'll start putting those in the comments so that you can uh, see more information about getting that or even putting it in the description of this course, because I think more people who have access to this, the better, obviously. Um, but what I will not do is I will not share quizzes and answers to tests and things like that. I mean, that's just silly. Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on. Um, take the test. Take the test yourself. It'll be okay. You can take it multiple times. The way that these things are set up so far is you can take it like three or four times in, in a matter of minutes if you really wanted to breeze through it. And then it resets and you have to wait and then you can just continue to take it. There's no reason that you couldn't pass these tests, at least for these first two courses. No problem at all. They have all of the content. It's all right there. Uh, just do the readings, watch the videos, take the course, right? Um, that's not the reason I'm doing these videos is to help you get that that much easier. It's more to tell you why you should or shouldn't do it. And so far, what I'm seeing is I think you should. 
think you should check it out. So anyway, hopefully you can appreciate that. And uh, if you're still watching right now, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'm done for right now, but if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I drop new content every week on all things data analytics careers. So whether you're getting in, wanting to move up in your career, or just learn more in general about a career in analytics, you know where to find me. So thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next video.